Hello, my name is Mike Breeze. I'm a filmmaker and a member of the Friends of the Morecambe Winter Gardens. For many years, Evelyn Archer was the champion of the theatre. Her work resulted in the rescue of the theatre and subsequent efforts to slowly restore this magnificent building. In 2004, Evelyn asked me to make a film in support of a bid for funds. I decided to make four short films illustrating the theatre, the work of the volunteers and so on. Unfortunately, our bid was unsuccessful, but fundraising and work continued. Since I made these films, a lot of improvements have been made, a lot of facilities have been added. Evelyn introduces the first film. lovely theatre, the Winter Gardens. It's been closed since 1977, but I'm sure you'll be really surprised when you come and have a look inside. This building is a theatre. It's a, a beautiful theatre which seated 2,150 people and uh, it was built in, in the Victorian time in 1897 and it was called, when it was first built, the Victoria Pavilion because it, they opened it in Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee year. It's special because the architecture of it, the fact that it's an old music hall and there aren't many musicals that have survived and I mean you couldn't recreate something as beautiful as this again it'd be far too expensive so it's very special that we protect it and we we take care of it the winter gardens or Victoria pavilion was opened in 1897 According to the Theatre's Trust, it is a music hall and probably the only one of its kind still remaining. It would have been used for a big concert party or minstrel show. The leading theatre architect, Frank Matcham, acted as consultant to Magnol and Littlewood, who were the architects for the building. Situated on the seafront, the main elevation is an ornate, symmetrical composition of brick and terracotta. At ground level, the entrance is flanked by shops. The foyer has fine tiling and plaster decorations and a pair of remarkably preserved bow-fronted ticket kiosks. The stair hall has elaborate marble, coloured tiles and fine joinery. The auditorium is impressive, very wide, and covered by a vast segmental tunnel vaulted ceiling which soars over the whole space, including the area over the top of the boxes, and is divided into richly decorated panels. For a theatre of such size, it had over 2,000 seats, the stage is not very large, but it does have a full height fly tower to allow for scenery and equipment to be pulled clear of the performance area. The fly floor is in good condition, with plenty of space for both the restoration of facilities and room to work. Either side of the stage there are dressing rooms on all levels. The stage itself is raked, that means it has a gentle slope from back to front. The orchestra pit has access from beneath the stage for the musicians. 
We shall be looking at ways to use this fine building in part four of the series. We started a volunteers group on a Wednesday and that some of them are retired, they're joiners, they're builders, they're, they're some of our engineers and, um, and some are young, uh, young women that want to do something on a Wednesday afternoon. And all the apron or the horseshoe as we call it round, round the auditorium was left when they spent 1.2 million on the exterior uh, and work on the interior then it was left rubble and we couldn't use it so we're quite proud that we've raised enough money to have the horseshoe concreted and the volunteers painted it and, and now they're working on the columns. What we're doing is we're taking these pillars back down to bare metal. Uh, there was originally paint on them, underneath them there was a layer of um, that sort of textured wallpaper. Beneath that there's um, a layer of sort of gold gilt almost and then underneath that is a layer of plastic. So I'm using the chisel because it's the only thing that can break through the plastic. We can do most of the rest of the stuff with a blow lamp. And this beautiful parky floor um, unfortunately, when the carpet was ripped up, all the nails were left um, prominent. So they've worked for months and months on getting the floor ready so that we can sand it and varnish it. And it'll look absolutely beautiful when it's done. Uh, yeah, we're just busy uh, knocking all these yeah. nails in. Uh, uh, that's, been, uh, that's been left flat for so long. And uh, uh, there's a lot of them, as you can see. But anyway, we are, we are getting there slowly. They've been uh, where, the, where the seats used to be. The seats have been ripped out, and uh, that's that's left all these nails and uh, and, and also where the carpet used to be as well uh, in this area. Where there was all carpet down here, so so the carpet's been ripped out as well. And of course, all the nails are, are like still in, unfortunately. We're going to sand the the whole area then. That's right. The, the, the whole area is going to be sanded, and then of course it, it'll uh, it'll look a lot different then, like yeah. Since just after Christmas we've been doing this now, floor, and replacing some of, a lot of the, the blocks that are really smashed, yeah. you know, and split in two. I've been doing that, and these lads have been filling just the small gaps in. No, no, we're trying to get most of the nails, but there's a hell of a lot of nails in here. A hell of a lot of nails, yeah. you know. I mean, we've been over it a couple of times, there's still nails. Still nails popping up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there is, yeah, usually uh, seven or eight, and sometimes there's... 12, you know. And this just happens every Wednesday? Yeah, every Wednesday afternoon, yeah. yeah. So we're very, very grateful to the, all the volunteers that come along. I know we're all volunteers. I mean, none of us get paid for the hours we've put in. But it's a, it's a, a labour of love, really. Well, looking at the theatre now, I mean... People don't realise that there were 2,150 seats in the theatre. I mean, many, many years ago, they used to fill them all, and they used to have Sunday concerts where 6.15 and 8.30, two houses, full each time. But we've got to think logically. There's no way that we can fill a theatre like this. 2,000 seats, seven nights of the week. We just can't do it. So we've had to look at... Um, a multi-purpose use. Yeah, well, the auditorium is a huge area and we can use it for lots of things. But unfortunately, there is a rake in the floor. So we need to be able to lay um, a floor that's not permanent, but a level floor so that people can use it use it for ballroom dancing, we can have banqueting inside the theatre, we can have wrestling matches, we can have tea dancing, all the other things that 
will bring different groups of people into the theatre. Now, the stage, um, I mean, it's quite a big stage, and people are surprised that it's the same size as the Grand at Blackpool. What do we use the stage for? Lots of things we can use the stage for. I mean, uh, we've had children on there uh, dancing. We've had, um, funnily enough, we had the Boy Scouts came to do their entertainment badge on the on the stage. Uh, we've had pantomimes on the stage. We've had groups on the stage. Uh, I mean, plays. Uh, th- th- there's an absolute uh, minefield of things that we can use that stage for. Well, if we leave the safety curtain down, that the stage is a room in itself and it can be used for meetings. People can do, uh, dancing classes can use it to practice, rehearsal space. I mean, there's lots of things we could do with it. And we've got to make the building workable and every space within the building workable separately. I mean, once we lost the sea change funding and we had to rethink what we wanted to do, we had to look at our priorities, and we made a priority list. And one of the biggest priorities is uh, provision of toilets and a bar area. We've got planning permission now, that's been passed, and the council have given us planning permission in order to put ladies, gents, disabled toilets within the bar area and refurbish the bar out as a bar or a snack bar when the building's in use. So the main priority at the moment is to open up the ground floor for use next year. We've asked three builders to give us estimates for the cost of uh, refurbishing the bar area once the toilets are in. They're working very closely with Lancaster City Council's conservation officer and things will only be done within the theatre that are approved by the conservation officer. But, I mean, that's the start. That's our priority list, raising the money in order to do it. Since I filmed for the original presentation, Volunteers and contractors have been working on several projects to make the theatre usable and so generate income. One of the first areas with access from the seafront as well as the auditorium was used to create the Parisian bar. It was complete with toilets, tea and licence bars and adjacent office for the theatre administration. Walls were plastered and painted furnishing provided and mementos of the theatre's history placed on the walls. The area could then be used for social events as well as small-scale performances. To the right of the stage, rooms that had been stripped right back to the bare brick were cleaned and painted to make dressing rooms for the use of performers. This included the provision of showers and toilets and makeup counters. The stage area itself received some basic hanging, or flying equipment as it should be called, to carry lighting and curtains to make the area more attractive and practical. Thanks to a generous benefactor, a much needed fire alarm system was installed in the auditorium along with a much needed heating system. Following the considerable amount of volunteer work on the auditorium floor, it became possible to apply special treatment and polish. The orchestra pit was cleared and provided with a smart surround. And most stunning of all was the construction and fitting of a wooden front to the horseshoe promenade. However, Significant as all this is, this wonderful building still needs work doing to both preserve it for the future and to make it usable for performances.